HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in on the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have a look at this year's Hillers football team. The Hopkinton Senior Center hosted a tomato tasting contest and a great turnout was on hand at the Hopkins School Solar Eclipse viewing event. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. HCAM News received an update regarding the animal cruelty case against Louise Coleman. Louise is the director of the temporarily closed Greyhound Friends. The shelter was closed due to numerous reports of inhumane and unsanitary conditions. The judge denied the defendant's motions to dismiss the charges. The defendant's attorney claimed that the case should be dismissed because the charges were unconstitutionally vague and claimed she did not have charge or custody of the dogs. The judge denied the defendant's motion and found that there was more than sufficient evidence to demonstrate probable cause and that the reports and other evidence provided demonstrate probable cause to believe that the defendant unnecessarily failed to provide the animals with the proper sanitary environment. You can see more on our website, hcam.tv. The Department of Conservation and Recreation's Bureau of Forestry and Fire Control and Department of Fish and Game mobilized 16 state wildland firefighters from across Massachusetts at the Hopkinton State Park to travel north and assist British Columbia Canadian forces with a series of wildland fire outbreaks. On August 3rd, the Hopkinton Police Department completed their parking lot expansion project. You can see a glimpse of the new and improved parking lot right here. Here is a shot of the beautiful Claflin Fountain on the town common at sunset. We thank Stacy Scott for sending us this photo. On July 30th, Hopkinton Community Summer Bands performed at the Westboro Festival of Summer Bands. This photo was submitted by Jane McCloskey. Hopkinton High School alumni from the class of 1984 had a little get together at Cornell's on July 27th. The event was organized by a classmate returning to town for a visit. You have a used cell phone battery you would like to get rid of? We'll bring it down to the Hopkinton Senior Center as the Senior Center is one of the locations you can bring used cell batteries to be recycled. The hours that you can submit your used button cell battery to the Senior Center is Monday through Thursday of next week, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. or Friday, 8.30 to 2 p.m. All the proceeds go to benefit health programs at the Senior Center. The additional Dropbox locations include the Woodville Post Office, the Hopkinton Post Office, the St. John's Church, Hopkinton Library, Golden Pond, and St. Paul's Church. The Hopkinton Library has released an update regarding the library renovation and expansion project. Quote, we're getting very excited to open our newly expanded and renovated building, and we hope you're excited to see it too. Library staff are appreciative to the community and the many groups and town departments who have been supportive. Well, we have been in the temporary location and for the overall project. 
It is so exciting that the community is going to have a modern library for all age groups. The children's room will have an activity room, benches by the windows, computers for homework and exploring, and a puppet theater. Teens will have space to meet, read, gather around games, and collaborate on homework. Adults will enjoy comfortable chairs to read in, computers and study tables and rooms for quiet study and work. We'll also have meeting rooms available for library events and use by community members of all ages. There will be a classroom for workshops, classes, and meetings, as well as meeting spaces for large and small groups. As always, our dedicated staff will assist the community in booking rooms, finding materials, and doing research. There is so much to look forward to, and it's coming soon. The new library will be a beautiful space in the center of town for all to enjoy. We will be closing to move back to 13 Main Street in the early fall. Please watch our website, Twitter, and Facebook for updates about the move. We will post exact dates and more information as soon as we can. The Hopkinton Senior Center had eight contestants in their first ever tomato tasting contest. Three judges tried each tomato and picked the top three. After the tomato contest, attendees were treated to some terrific barbecue from Baypath Elder Services. Here is a look at a fun afternoon at the Hopkinton Senior Center. It was tomato time at the Hopkinton Senior Center. The Senior Center hosted their first tomato tasting contest and had many delicious entries to judge. So, um, all homegrown from, home from Hopkinton Gardens and a lot of the, uh, were all of them from here? I believe all the plants either came from here or were uh, from our started here in this building. Yeah, yeah. so wow. greenhouse. we wow. sell good tomato plants early in the spring, so come and get them. And the winners are first place, goes to Donna Denise. <laughs> Second place to Art Lowell. Art Lowell. And third place is to Hank Alessio. Hey. If you're interested, you can help yourself with some of the uh, tidbits that are there and have your own little contest, see how you feel about this was Hank Alessio's idea to have a tomato contest. Uh, being the first one we've had, it was, you know, trial and error, but I think everything went very well. Um, we had more people bring in tomatoes than I thought we would, and we had a few judges, and they were judged on their appearance and their taste, and all of those good traits, especially taste. And we did get three winners. We have Don Deneen won first place. Um, Arthur Lowell won second. And Aunt Alessio won third. So this is the first one, but we will turn this into an annual event. So everybody start growing tomatoes. Next year, keep us in mind. And you get a nice ribbon, and the first place person gets the trophy. <laughs> After the tomato contest, Attendees got the opportunity to enjoy some delicious barbecue, as well as sample the tomato entries and, of course, socialize. The cookouts presented by uh, Bay Path Elder Services as an outreach service to get in front of the population more than they have. So it's a free picnic for everybody, and it's very well attended, and hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken, all kinds of extras, so it's a fine day. <laughs> Coming up next on HCAM News, we'll give you a glimpse at this year's Hiller football team. We have amazing scenes from this week's solar eclipse, and we'll show you what went on at Hopkins School during the eclipse day. And Matt Clark will fill you in with the latest HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider. You're locked into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Are you involved with a group in the Hopkinton community? HCAM can help you get the word out. 
Get online and head over to hcam.tv slash community groups to find out more. We will help get word out about what your organization has going on through a number of ways, including through our TV stations, social media pages, and YouTube page. We have a number of other ways we are working to get word out about our member community organizations, such as digital screen promotion, and we can even help your nonprofit organization produce a professional video. Find out more right now at hcam.tv slash community groups. My name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history. We're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices. And we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us. Welcome back to HCAM News. Head coach Jim Gerrard is back on the practice field with the Hopkinton Hillers football team, getting the team ready for the 2017-2018 season. This past week, I went down to the practice and caught up with this year's captains. The Hopkinton Hillers football team finished with four wins and seven losses last season. This year's Hillers captains, who are all seniors, all played a good amount of minutes last year and bring good experience to the table. I'm Matt Lindquist. I play uh, linebacker and wide receiver. Anthony Farina. I play linebacker and uh, offensive line. I'm Michael Ainelli. I play uh, safety and receiver. I'm um, Alex McDonald. I play defensive end and offensive tackle. Uh, Connor Hebert, running back and uh, D-back. Seniors Matt Lindquist and Anthony Farina will lead the linebacking core this year. On the offensive side of the ball, Matt Lindquist will be lining up bat receiver, while Anthony Farina will be on the offensive line. Uh, well, at linebacker, we're working on defeating blocks and our agility to uh, be able to play with any running back in this league. Yeah, it's just a lot of fundamentals and basics. So just kind of going back to square one, like Pop Warner days, just relearning all the old stuff. Michael Ionelli will also serve as wide receiver and transition to safety on the defensive side this year. Uh, we're looking good. We've been looking forward to it um, all off season. You know, we all been working hard, working together. So we've been doing good so far. Conditioning is tough, but we're battling through it together. We're looking forward to a good season. Alex McDonald will serve as a top defensive end and offensive tackle. Uh, definitely conditioning is tough, but uh, we've been working all summer. We're getting ready for this season. We're definitely ready to bring it this year. Connor Hebert, who is entering his senior year, is expected to lead the backfield as well as get a good amount of reps at cornerback on the defensive side. Yeah, even in hot heat like this, we're all motivated, we're all pushing each other, so uh, we all know the good outcome that we can uh, get to this by hard work and good conditioning. The Hillers are excited for this season, and the players predict good things to come. Uh, well, it's been a grind, you know. First week of camp always is. Uh, we've been working hard, getting better every day. Uh, team's looking good, everyone's conditioning every day, working hard. Uh, lots of self-motivation, which is good. And, uh, yeah, you want to say something? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm the most confident I've ever been with a football team, with this team. I'm really excited to see what product we can put on the field this fall. Don't forget, you'll be able to catch all Hopkinton Hiller football home games and maybe even some away games as well as many other Hiller sports games airing on the HCAM channels throughout the season. On Monday, August 21st, throughout the United States, there was a viewable solar eclipse. While it wasn't a full eclipse view in Massachusetts, if you had the eclipse glasses, you still got a great look. 
Hopkins School made a day of the rare occurrence and invited students and community members to view the eclipse and participate in eclipse-related activities. Here is a look at the Hopkins event, which drew a great turnout. Students, volunteers, and some staff, as well as community members, gathered at a Hopkins Elementary School to watch one of the rarest natural wonders, the solar eclipse. For the first time in many years throughout the United States, our country got a look at a solar eclipse. In some parts of the country, onlookers got to view a total eclipse, while for most in New England, it was a almost total eclipse. Students participated in eclipse-related activities, and despite school not being in session yet, the student turnout was very good. We have over 100 students. Um, these are students that were 4th and 5th graders last year. So class of 2024 and class of 2025 at Hopkinton High School are here today enjoying our eclipse viewing party. So we have a couple of very dedicated teachers. Um, Jen Jordan, who's a fifth grade teacher, Jill Kaufman, another fifth grade teacher, and Valerie Lachance, who's a high school teacher, as well as Stephanie Doty, who's our tech um, integration specialist. And they put this entire event together, um, complete with nail painting, with UV paint. Um, we've got solar photo paper, um, pinhole cameras. So students are doing all sorts of activities related to the solar eclipse and then coming out and we will be enjoying the eclipse with these safe glasses for viewing in a little bit. So we're getting close to the full that we will see here as you can see we're not getting the totality here but it's still a fun day. And uh, as the principal how exciting is it just to see the turnout here today? It's amazing I mean it's a week before school is starting to see so many children excited um, studying about eclipses is actually fifth grade science curriculum and that's one of the reasons that we feel so lucky to have so many students here today and experiencing it in real life and then going back and talking about it as they study it in the school year. We are having a solar eclipse party today because this is the first time in a long time that we have coast to coast solar viewing options and so it's very exciting and um, we thought it would be great to share this experience with our science loving students because here at Hopkins we love science. Absolutely and I understand there's some activities going on. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about uh the activities that you have happening today? Sure, so this is the pinhole camera table right here and basically what the kids are doing is they're creating a viewer that when they take it outside they can capture the image that the sun makes, it's light, onto a board and then we're having the kids play around with using multiple pinholes um, to see the patterns and the shapes and the intensity of the light that they're able to see on the board. Basically we sent out an email and we were we knew that we have a lot of students who love science and are passionate about science and we are thrilled with the turnout. It's far better than we expected and we're hoping that you know we'll be able to do it all over again in another six years or so. So we're making these bracelets that they change color when you go out into the sun. They're all different colors. You can sort of see some of mine even though when you come inside they uh, turn back to these color over here. But um from the UV light, they uh, when you go out in the sun, it doesn't matter what time it um, they change color. So, uh, what got you interested in uh, volunteering for today's event? Um, I don't know. I just liked. I thought the idea of the solar eclipse was really cool, and I liked uh, helping out with all the other kids who are excited about the solar eclipse as well. We're painting nails, and the nail polish starts clear, or it's clear inside, and then when you go outside, it turns pink. Yeah, it's activated by the sun. You having fun at today's event? Yeah, it's actually really fun. What are, you, what are your names? What grade are you in? Um, I'm going into fifth grade. I'm going into sixth grade. And my name's Presley. And my name's Floti. Excellent. Are you excited to uh, see the eclipse today? Yeah. Have you uh, been watching the, uh, the, the eclipse stream at all in the uh, other places? Yeah, me and my friends went to watch it a lot. Yeah. Do you uh, girls like science? Yes, I love science. It's my favorite subject. Did you uh, like do some research and study about the eclipse as well? Yes. 
Very nice. As you can see here, we take these little uh, these little pieces of paper, and uh, we have an assortment of things laid out here on the table. And you can take uh, any of these things and put it on the paper. Basically, and make then, like a cool design, interesting design. Mm -hmm. You can bring it out on that side, and you uh, let it sit in the sun, and then the paper will absorb the sunlight. Like as you can see here. But the objects that you put on the paper, the shadow keeps the paper from absorbing that sunlight. So there will be like uh, leftover shadows into the paper. Uh, you just put it in water and then this is what you get. This is your final project. After, product. after right it dries. Here. Yeah. Oh, very cool. And uh, how did you guys get involved with uh, volunteering for today's uh, solar eclipse day? Um, I was emailed by my chem teacher. Yeah, me who, too. Yeah, who was like saying mm -hmm. I want to do this. And I thought it was really cool, so. Our teachers organized this, so they asked uh, their students if they wanted to come help, and we're like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. Right now, you are going to witness a time lapse of the eclipse. HCAM's Mike Terosian had the HCAM camera pointing at the eclipse for over an hour. You are viewing all the footage significantly sped up. You may notice the camera move at times, and that is because while we were taking footage of the eclipse, dozens of attendees were taking a look through the viewfinder for the best available glimpse of the eclipse over Hopkinton. Here is a sped up version of what could be seen on Monday, August 21st throughout the Hopkinton area. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channel. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's promotions coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, August 25th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts are on location at Red Barn's Coffee Roasters at Angel's Garden Center and talk with HCAM station manager Jim Cousins on a brand new Hopkinton Coffee Break. And the philosophy is the same, you know. It's, I went to, uh, I think it was in Watertown, and I was looking at a program there, and there was a girl who was like editing, and I said, how do you like this class? She says, it's awesome. Why is it awesome? Tell me why. Well, I'm using Adobe Premiere, which professionals use, and I know that my product is going on my local TV channel, so it's not just me and my class. My community is seeing it. On Wednesday, August 30th at 8 p.m., Mary Arnott talks with Hopkinton's water and sewer manager Eric Carty about the town's water management and what you can do to reduce your water usage on a new episode of All About Hopkinton. Speaking of the water, let's talk about water supply and quality. I have a lot of questions there, so where would you like to start on that? Uh, well, we've got a lot going on in that department. Uh, we've had several studies done uh, over the past couple of years, and one of the ones we're going to be implementing soon is over at our Fruit Street location. We have uh, three separate well fields over there. On Thursday, August 31st at 8 p.m., 
Journalist David Wallace looks into a problem that we are facing more and more in the age of information. How to spot fake news on a brand new HCAM TV special. What we're talking about is news and facts and how to decide or determine whether what you're getting is news and facts or opinion or something totally different altogether. And on Friday, September 1st at 6.30 p.m., Lisa Mancuso and Reno Bocci work in the kitchen to make spaghetti with artichoke sauce and a new episode of The Golden Pan. So there's sun-dried tomatoes in here. Um, I see celery. Celery, onions. Some onions. And, uh, Six teaspoons of mixed flour. Six teaspoons of minced garlic. So just let it simmer. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to HCAM.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, hcam.tv, you can view some more pictures from the solar eclipse and also details about some upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. We hope your summer has been great, and as always, thanks for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at BlackstoneValleyWealth.com.